good morning. Uh, I'm, I'm exhausted, but I wanted to start this new reading vlog before I headed off to work. Um, this was originally going to be a very different reading vlog. I was planning to read uh, a Haruki Murakami novel and Lonely Castle in the Mirror next. So I was going to do like another Japanese reading vlog. But then last night I finished City of Brass and it was amazing i could not look away like i was I, one of the reasons i was so tired is that i was up till midnight i definitely should have put the book down but i was like i have to see how it ends um the book was so good i i started off the book thinking okay it's good it's good it's giving me a little bit like percy jackson vibes in a good way um but you know it's a lot of travel there's not a lot going on right now and then they got to david bad and I was like, oh, this is interesting. But again, like things are starting to sort of plateau. And then the ending, my God. Oh, the ending turned it from a four star book into a four and a half star book. It was so good. I loved how complicated the politics were. Like there wasn't just like a good guy, bad guy. There was, you know, multiple sides to everything. No one was really good. No one was really bad. I, I just, I loved it. Um, it's fantastic. And so I did something that I don't typically do, which is I immediately said, I'm gonna pick up book two, which is Kingdom of Copper. So I think, the plan as it stands is just to bust through this series, Kingdom of Copper and then Empire of Gold. I already have it. And I actually, in a completely amazing stroke of luck, picked up an arc of the short story collection, River of Silver. We got it at work and I was like, perfect. I'm reading City of Brass right now. Uh, so I'll take this home with me. So yeah, I'll, fi I'll finish up the series completely. Um, I'm, I'm so excited. I just, I'm itching to get into it. I only have like a couple minutes. I'm just waiting for my breakfast to finish being made and I'm gonna like eat that quick and leave because I pushed everything off longer than I needed to. Well, like I said, I'm just I'm just so tired. But I'm really excited to get into Kingdom of Copper. This uh, vlog is going to have spoilers, but they're all going to be like marked as spoiler sections. So don't worry. There, there'll be like a prompt on the screen or something. I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do it yet, but if I go into a spoiler section, I will let you know. Uh, Cause I, I, I don't wanna just talk spoilers, but I also wanna talk like spoilers. Cause I just, I'm like low key obsessed. And I used to think this was like a huge, like a lot of people talked about the series online and things. And it is definitely bigger. It's one of the more popular series out there, but in like looking for things, I was like, the fandom here is not huge. Like, why not? It deserves to be. So yeah, this is really good. I, I don't want to say it's like an under the radar series, but it's definitely not getting the love it deserves. So anyway, Kingdom of Copper. Um, I think that the prologue takes place like immediately after. But I do think that it then like jumps. I want to say it's like three years later. I thought I saw um, just online people talking. Yeah, this is a chunky one. It's six, six twenty, six hundred twenty pages.
I have not done a lot of reading over the last couple days. I think part of it is slight burnout, but more than that, it's been like anxiety for all the changes that are happening. I have to kind of like retrain myself to read a little bit. Like my go-to relax has not been reading. It's been like watching TV, doing nothing. And well, it's not bad. And sometimes I enjoy doing that. I do like reading and I just have to like remind myself that I like reading. So today that's kind of my priority is to just do a lot of reading. Um, I'm outside, I'm wearing pajamas today. I almost never wear pajamas outside, it feels weird, but I'm doing it. I'm gonna hang out with Tank. He likes to sit on this blanket. This is his blanket. Say hi, Tanky. Good boy. Good boy, sweetie. Good boy. And um, yeah, basically I'm gonna set a timer. I do have food on the way, so if the food gets here first, I'll eat. But I set a timer and I'm gonna try to read for like 40 minutes um, without interruption. Um, I'm really, really hoping uh, I can do it because it's a nice long stretch. So that's what we're gonna try for. This is so bizarre. Um, oh, <laughs> hi, you're probably noticing. Oh my God. Okay. This is, it's cool. It's cool, but this is weird. Um, you're probably noticing like quality difference immediately because I, I actually got a new phone because my old one has basically crapped out. Unfortunately, I record pretty much everything on my phone. So this is better. Um, but this is weird. Um, so yeah, you're probably gonna see me experimenting a lot. I was not planning to get a new phone, so this was sort of <laughs> um, an unexpected hurdle to get through. It is like 11 o'clock at night right now, and I just wanted to update and talk about a few things. And I had a couple boxes to open. I have a fairy loot, I have an owl crate, and I have an order from Bookish Box. And, um, I wanted to open them and just talk about some things because today was my last day of work at the Barnes & Noble location that I have been working at for, um, let's see, like two and a half, almost three years. And it's weird. I kind of talked about it in my last couple of vlogs. Um, and I'm not going to get super far into it, but like I took a position at another Barnes & Noble. It's a better position. It's not only like moving upwards, but it is the kind of position that I want to be doing, uh, sticking with, if I'm going to stick with Barnes & Noble, which is my plan until I get rich and famous, obviously. <laughs> um, and it was, you know, kind of 
heartbreaking to leave. Um, I will update some more on Devabod because, oh my God, the things that are happening. But um, I wanted to just take a couple minutes to talk about like real stuff going on and not just Devabod. So um, we're gonna start. Well, first I'll show you. I actually um, picked up a new copy of Bitter Blue, which, ooh, okay. Um, this is gonna be interesting to adjust to. I'm, I'm shooting it in like cinematic mode. Um, it's a new copy of Bitter Blue, um, which, hello. <laughs> um, my old copy, I don't know where it is. And I actually really like these covers. Um, so, you know, you know what, hold on, let me switch like modes real quick. We're gonna just try regular like video. I do like cinematic, but I don't think it's useful for this. So new copy of Bitter Blue, which I will be putting away. I'm gonna just not put these away tonight, I don't think. I don't know, it just seems like a lot. It's, it's like really late for me. I've been so anxious um, because of starting at a new location. I know I can do the job. I am just anxious and you can't really control that. I, you know, and um, Yesterday, I wasn't even able to finish lunch. Um, I slept like four hours and I am tired, but I'm not like exhausted. I just, I don't know. I, I have felt like very little control over my emotions lately. So um, fairy loot, we're doing them first immediately. Absolutely in love. This isn't like really an unboxing completely, but like that's gorge. Okay, a little notepad. You can always use that. So the store I'm going to is a lot further away, which was my choice. I agreed to it, and you know it's not complete. It's not in the cards at the moment, but it's not completely impossible that I might at some point move closer to this location. It's well, total on like busy days, according to Google Maps, look like it's going to be about three hours total commute there and back, which sounds like a lot. And I know a lot of people at my location I've just left were really concerned about that and said that sounded like a lot. I don't actually mind driving. Driving is not the biggest deal for me. And I'll be listening to audiobooks. I listen to audiobooks a lot anyway, so this is a good opportunity. And I actually think because I'll be doing a lot of reading via audiobook, I'll come home and I can read, but I won't feel like I hadn't been reading all day. So I think that's actually going to end up being a boon. But that being said, I am a little worried about it because that is far. Um, I do get to choose my hours though. So I'm, I'm probably gonna work like basically first thing. This is just a bag with like books on it. Is this a d oh my god no way this is additions they've done that's cool that's neat i like that i've got a little pin as well which is cute so i am i am worried about the commute a little bit not not as worried as it could be but it's gonna definitely be an adjustment although i drive now it's in traffic it's like 45 minutes so like one way so it's not i'm not adding a ridiculous amount of time I don't think I in high school I had to drive kind of far to get to my school like it was like an hour each way to get to high school it's doable I think I'm worried about like eating and I'm not gonna get into this here but I do have some like really bad eating habits and I want to work on regulating that and I think this might throw a little bit of a wrench in that process uh so it's gonna be about building a lot of really good new habits in general I think that's gonna be a little difficult I haven't loved all of them but these are really these are cute I'm living for these um and then they're tarot cards I don't know we'll just check in a minute we've got I do love fairy loot's tarot cards I think that's something that has me in an absolute chokehold with them okay time for the moment of truth let's see did I put the spoiler card somewhere I guess it's still in the box Ooh, I forgot it was gonna be violet made of thorns. 
that's pretty that's really pretty um ooh, that ombre though i don't think the camera is doing it justice in person it goes from such a deep gorgeous color it's like a it feels very sunset it's i'm really loving that so one of the reasons i'm really excited to be going to a new location for work is man i don't want to be too direct um i want to be professional that's what i'm trying to say um but the location i was working at has had a lot of difficulties lately it's really a lot of things happening at once and to some degree there's nothing that can be done about some of these because things just happen you know right now the way the world is it's hard to hire it's hard to get people to stay i will be the first to admit that barnes noble does not pay super well i am very lucky to be able to still live with my parents so that's one less concern for me and I'm very lucky in that like outside of like student loans um and like I mean I pay like car stuff and I um thank for <laughs> this phone now because <laughs> um but like I don't have wild expenses to deal with like I'm not like I got I've got money that I have to spend on things um but like it's not so much that I'm drowning in it so I do know I'm like privileged in like that respect to be able to work a job in large part because I enjoy doing it um but Barnes and Noble does not pay super great it's a business that's I mean we're they're, it seems they're trying to be more competitive but right now they're just not and that's hard to get people especially right now to work for companies like this I totally get it if I was if I did not love books and did not feel passionate about not just books, but I do actually really like Barnes & Noble as a company. Yes, they make missteps, but I do like them as a company and I've liked them as a company for a very long time. Um, like, I wouldn't work for the salary for like Walmart. Hell no, you know? Um, but there have just been a lot of hurdles and I'm, I'm really excited to leave that environment of stress and I'm hoping this new store won't be as stressful so bookish box this isn't the monthly subscription um this is just like a specialty box or a specialty book um it's the um it's part of their from blood nash collection because I have um the first three so this is number four I do love these covers. I, I'm a sucker for the artist. Um, Mono Weimar? Is that, that's how I've always said it, but I don't even know if that's how it's supposed to be said. That she's a big reason I bought <laughs> these editions. I just love her, her cover, her cover art. I'm also really hoping that uh, this new position isn't just being on the floor. About half the day is spent at the computer, which might be really bad for my eye. However, I think it's gonna be really good for me in other ways. I've talked, I think I've talked um, in some vlogs recently about just back problems I've been having. And that stems from being on my feet all day a little bit. So I think this is gonna help with that a lot. And I'm, I'm really hoping it does. I think I've spent a lot of my life sort of re-socializing. Um, so, when I went to middle school, my middle school is so big that basically it was like three middle schools worth of students combined and they would cut it up into like groups. So like there'd be like group A, group B, and group C and you were just randomly assigned and every year obviously randomly assigned and I never ended up on a group with other friends and sixth, seventh, and eighth grade were all about making new friends. And then in high school, that was all about making new friends again because I was going to a high school and connected to my middle school. Like I said, I drove pretty far to get there. I kind of had given up a little bit in high school um, to a degree. And I made friends, but not many. And then 
and um in college obviously uh freshman year of college was really the last time i had to work really hard to make friends and i made really great like my best friends but not to say like going to work is the same thing because i'm not going to work to make friends i honestly don't i don't want to say i don't care if people like me but it's not my priority uh, my priority is just to be able to work with people and hopefully get along with them but my, my priority is not like to be liked and to make like a lot of friends i that's not important um but like the, that re-socializing is something that like terrifies me just like absolutely terrifies me and that's what's giving me the most anxiety is like just meeting people and finding a place you know i forgot that this was um our next i will create a collectible ceramic bowl i will create i have been like debating on and off whether to cancel the subscription but i do love these collectible bowls and they've been doing a lot of exclusive covers and i've if there's one thing that will get me it's an exclusive cover so even more than like stained edges so this one is uh, Rivendell. I don't know why I sent this into Elf one. I don't know if I like this better than the Hobbit one. I loved the Hobbit one. So that's what it looks like on the inside. I've not read Fable. I want to. I actually made a list um, on Excel, which ugh, I freaking love Excel. But I made a list on there of every book box book I received not special editions that I've ordered through book boxes but ones that came in monthly boxes and I made a list and I kind of like prioritized the, like the ones that I really wanted to get to and there are some that I want to just like physically read but the ones that I don't care about physically reading I think my drive a lot of my audiobooks are going to come from this list which I'm really excited to see you know it'll help because there are so many that I have and I, I just I want to read and just haven't and I think this will help me like because if I hate something like right away that's it I don't have to continue on it so I am like I said looking forward to the audiobook portion that's cute I, I like that a zipper pull interesting I don't know I guess you put it on a bag she this is cute hold on she pulled a pouch of tea from the basket the bag read an owl crate tea exclusive and it smelled simply delicious magic seemed to waft up from the bag as she carefully opened it she inhaled deeply and it smelled like banana bread how delightful she couldn't wait to and then you like i guess continue it this is cute i absolutely love it um i don't know if we'll ever drink it because it's almost like too cute to drink that's stupid so tomorrow i'm off and I'm not going to put any expectations on myself to get things done. I like things other than like work. I don't think I'm going to set any expectations on myself for this next week, which is a big ask of myself, but I think I need to give myself the room to just figure out the pattern and fall naturally into it. Normally, I have like daily goals that I want to check off and I keep sort of a goal sheet in my journal and I'll color in the boxes when I've completed that for the day. And I think I'm going to give myself a week off, which is not something I have done since like last November. So it's going to be a bit. They're, they're all goals that I want like to build like good habits around. And I feel secure enough that I don't think a week is going to break them. But I also think a week is going to give me time to breathe, to see how much free time I have, to if I come home and I'm exhausted, to just go to bed if I need to, to not feel compelled to be constantly on, basically. So I think that's what I'm going to do for myself this week. I think I just have to let myself be afraid and concerned and worried and anxious because I can't fight those feelings and it's it's embrace them or 
ignore them and ignoring them isn't gonna do much and by embrace i don't necessarily mean like don't deal with but just like there's only so much you can do pretty to this day cranes carry the strand of our fate yeah so this is from six crimson cranes which i read recently check out my galena reading vlog is it a notebook <gasps> oh shut the fuck up so you can fold cranes oh shut up oh my god oh bitch I love this so much. Oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna guarantee it, but I'm gonna try to make a crane every night. I'm gonna try to make a crane every night. It's pretty. Pretty, we'll open that out of the plastic in a sec. I hope I like this book, because now I have two editions. There is a corgi. I heard there was a corgi. There's a corgi. I, okay. I don't love owl crates like foiling on the covers. I don't know if they've ever done one that I'm like, ooh, I love that. It just kind of, not, not a huge fan, but no, it's not terrible. It's just not my favorite. But yeah, I just wanted to catch you up. It's sort of really, really heartbreaking and sad, like heart bruising, I think, to leave my place of work. Even though I'm not, I didn't like quit. I, I got a new position, um, but You know, I'm just, I'm so just sad about it. Nervous and I don't know, wanted to just share it because um, I feel like I'm going to probably be very off kilter for <laughs> the next couple, um, probably vlogs. I don't know if you'll see it in like regular videos, but if you watch the vlogs, I think you'll, you'll notice. might be a ridiculous goal but my goal on this the last day before I start my new position is to finish Kingdom of Copper I am nearly done um I'm on chapter 34 which going into spoilers real quick I totally fucking forgot that they were gonna try to take down um that they were going to try to take down the the Citadel Tower I was like okay Ali I'm all here for what you're doing and then the fucking tower falls what <laughs> screwing everything up for my boy um i'm so stressed about what's going on right now in this book <laughs> i think i have a little yeah i have like about a hundred pages left and um it's like three o'clock now so i am actually going to clean up my room a little bit do some cleaning um probably make a list of everything i need to get done um and then while I do that, I'm going to listen to audiobook, and then I think I'm going to sit and just try to read for a little bit. And I'm really going to try to, like, get stress levels down. Um, so, wish, wish me luck, maybe? <laughs> Ollie's fingers? Are you fucking kidding me? Oh 
my god. What? I thought they were just gonna jump in the lake. <gasps> what? What? <laughs> Okay, so I finished Kingdom of Copper. Who that, that ending? Oh my god. I She writes such good endings. I like am always like immediately propelled into the next one. I I love them. Even I do feel like this one had a little bit mid drag, just like just like the first one did. But <laughs> I do really think that the ending was just stellar and um <laughs> I go and write into book three right I'm gonna download the audiobook so I'll probably actually technically start listening to it on the ride tomorrow um rather than actually do any physical reading to start but oh I am not ready I'm not prepared <sighs> Oh, so good. I also watched the first episode of House of the Dragon. I really liked it. I was super wary going into it. I haven't read Fire and Blood. I think that's the Targaryen history. I haven't read that, but I do know, you know, what's in the Song of Ice and Fire books, and I know a little bit about the Targaryens outside of that, just because I am a fan. And um, I liked it. I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. I really liked all the actors. I think that it's doing a really good job of laying out the the playing field, the battlefield of this show. And I think it's also doing, you know, it's 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 different from Game of Thrones while still like playing in that space. And I really liked the balance it was striking there. And I kind of like that it's a much smaller story. Like Game of Thrones has a huge scope and this has a big scope, but it is much smaller. And I'm really, I, I like that. I'm excited for it. I'm looking forward to the next nine episodes um yeah and for the first time in a very long time I can commit to watching something on the same night every week because I will have all Sundays off moving forward and unless like something weird happens and yeah so that's kind of intensely exciting in its own way uh but yeah I'm gonna get ready for bed and <sighs> tomorrow tomorrow is a big day Okay, um, day one over. I, before I start the long trek home, I thought I would just check in, I guess, update. It was long. Um, I feel so out of place and strange. I forgot how this felt. Um, so that's gonna take getting used to. <laughs> um. I woke up and I just wanted to finish this chapter so that I can do the audiobook and start on a new chapter for that. But, um, so Ollie is my favorite character, which if I haven't made that clear, I have. And I came to, to the realization yesterday while driving home that I kind of want Ali and Nari to end up together. I'm just so fucking pissed at Dara, <laughs> I think, at this point. So I figure I should actually probably elaborate on the last thing I said, which is that I'm mad at Dara, so I hope that Ali ends up with Nari. That's not, like, strictly why I think Ali and Nari should end up together. I honestly think he treats her better than Dara did. He is more open with his secrets. Dara is always talking about, he's like, she's the only one who saw me. She didn't, she didn't see you for you. She saw you for like the lie you told, which was like the fact that you didn't tell her all this very important information about your past and who you were. And he kept things from her. And then that like kidnapping attempt, um, he fucked everything up. Um, he also has just, I'm, I'm totally for giving characters a second chance and I still love Dara and hope he gets redeemed. But he has caused so much havoc specifically for Nari and for Nari's way of life. 
and he has just killed a lot of people and basically helped <laughs> slaughter the, the the Giziri and um I just I feel like that's kind of unforgivable for a love interest I do want him to have a happy ending I really do I want him to be redeemed I would like him to get his I am assuming a original body back because they have his like thing in the crypts but I, I I just think I think I'll be a little disappointed if she ends up with Dar. I know the romance is not the main part of this book I just um I mean I'm involved I'm interested the politics I the, the plot is definitely the thing I'm most involved in but the, the romance is also I think like, important to me um Ali on the other hand I feel like he, well, he's definitely kept secrets too. I'm not going to be like, oh, he's perfect. He's just always open. No, no, no. But he's definitely done a lot better. And he definitely seems more interested in her, even, you know, he hates her right away. But like, once he gets to know her, he's more interested in her and he remembers things about her. And they have a lot of things in common, like interests. And I don't know, he just seems like a better fit <sighs> I'm not explaining it well but it's not just because I'm pissed at Dara I just I really think he's I really think he's just not the best choice for Nari so I wanted to expand on that real quick this is day three of work oh my god I I'm <sighs> it's a struggle right I'm not a good at making friends, at social interactions. Um, I'm working on it. I One thing I have found that's really helpful is because I do a lot of work in the office, I can go back there. So I was feeling like real stressed out and there were no customers that needed help. So I just went back there and started working on something. And that was totally, okay. no, no one thought anything of it. I was like, cool so I think I'll be like doing that like when I start to get really stressed out until I get super comfortable okay I should actually go now I got work I'm gonna come home and hang out with Tank and just do little things before work tomorrow When I tell you this book has been giving me so much, like just everything, I mean it. I mean it. I I, I love it so much. So um, I've been listening to the audiobook of it, which I don't know if I mentioned that. But I've been listening to the audiobook of it and I was crying on the drive home. I was screaming at it. I was like, fully invested there were a couple moments where my mouth was just open and I hadn't even realized I was just like I was like just stunned by this book and it is doing so much so right and there are so many decisions that have been made that are just so good this isn't necessarily a book that's going to exploit your expectations but what are you doing but it is a book that will take like presumptions and just works wonders with them. I I have not felt so much, I have not had so much of an opinion change as I have with like Dara in such a long time. And if you're watching the spoiler portions, you probably have an idea of, of how that's changing, um, but yeah. My God, <laughs> so many thoughts.
When I tell you, this book has been brutal. It's not like books one and two were gentle fantasies, but it's awful. the amount of just carnage and brutality and so many times I'm just like sitting here listening and I'm like mouth open, can't even just, just wow. My, like fuck. So I'm almost done with Empire of Gold, which I'm at the point, like, I'm in the final part, right? And it's like, like this is in a lot of fantasy, you know, you always have like the wrap up section and that's kind of where I'm at. And it's time for me to start thinking about like, ratings and I've been kind of balancing between five and four and a half stars for this one I think I mean there's still a little bit left but I really think I'm leaning towards four and a half because there are just things that aren't landing like they should and this is a debut series and you can tell that that's not like a I'm not saying that's a bad thing it's a phenomenal series but there are just things that I feel like a more experienced writer would have laid out uh, on the book landscape a little differently. I don't want to spoil uh, these things right now. Um, I'm not unhappy with it. I just, there are moments where I'm like, oh, okay, okay. This should have been in like an act ago or a book ago. Um, it's so good. I Four and a half stars is still like phenomenal for me. It's just like just shy of perfect. And I was like, am I being too nitpicky with that? And I was like, maybe. But I honestly, like, I would not be satisfied with myself if I said it was a five star book. Because it's, it's not a five star book. It's nearly a five star book, though. It's nearly a five star series. I think if I was going to rate this series in total, it'd be like four and a half, nearly five stars. It's fantastic. I'm a fan for life. But it's just, it's just, just shy of being just perfect. I'm so glad <laughs> that River of Silver exists because I just finished Empire of Gold. I just... <sighs> it's gonna be so hard walking away from from these books. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just cuddling with Tank, and I wanted to do a proper send off because I finished reading River of Silver actually quite a few days ago. It was good. It was. It was so hard to say goodbye to this series and these characters because. I'm very attached and like in the days since finishing I'll just be driving and be struck by like a memory from the books and it'll just be like a warm fuzzy good feeling so it's I'm happy I'm happy to have read them and I'm happy with how they turned out and I'm glad I read them back to back like that I think because it just it was such a treat but I did I finished it. It's over. I have to wait now for for her next book. I don't want to wait. That's not fair. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here with me on this journey as I read the Dave Abad trilogy, or at least books two, three, and then the short story collection. I did end up giving the third book five stars just because of how much I was enjoying it. It may not have been the perfect book, but it was so very enjoyable. 
If you are not a subscriber, but you like this content and want to see more, definitely consider. I would really appreciate it. And if you're already a subscriber and you're watching, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It means the world to me. If you're somewhere cold, I hope you're staying warm. If you're somewhere warm, I hope you're staying comfortable. And most of all, I hope you're reading a great book. I will see you guys next time. Bye.